Okay, in this video I'd like to take a look at uh, a little closer look at glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. Recall this is the entrance enzyme into the pentose phosphate pathway. So this is the entrance point and the rate limiting step and this is an extremely important enzyme because its function is to generate NADPH from NADP. Now, there is one specific example of the importance of NADPH that comes up in many of the uh, medical literature, and that has to do with detoxification in red blood cells. And detoxification in lots of other cells. Red blood cells specifically are very susceptible to oxidative damage. When oxidative damage occurs, the most susceptible portion of the cell, red blood cell, are the membrane lipids. So if this damage harms the lipids, that means the cell can lyse or burst. If we have red blood cells that are bursting, lysing, they can no longer carry their oxygen uh, carrying function, perform their oxygen carrying function, and so an individual will result in anemia. Now how does the red blood cell protect itself? Now recall that the oxygen concentration in red blood cells is very high. So therefore we have a lot of substrate to form oxygen free radicals. And these free radicals are formed when electrons are being moved around. Recall electrons are in motion whenever we have redox reactions. So if these electrons that are typically moving into our redox partners get loose and bind onto molecular oxygen, because of the electronegative nature of oxygen, these extra electrons will be attracted and held to it. The problem with this is that we have an available electron for binding. And so these free radicals, these electrons, based on these free radicals, can bind to a lot of different compounds. They can bind to proteins, they can bind to carbohydrates, and they can bind to lipids. For example, if we have an unsaturated fatty acid on our membrane as part of our phospholipid that is constructing our lipid bilayer, unsaturated fatty acid means that we have a carbon-carbon double bond. That extra carbon-carbon bond, those electrons between that double bond, are susceptible to attack by these free radicals. If we do that, we begin to add oxygen into this unsaturated fatty acid. Recall this is a polar molecule. If we introduce a polar molecule into a hydrophobic environment, this will result in disruption of the plasma membrane, leading to cell lysis. So the cell has a mechanism, of course, to be able to control this reaction. The way the cell does this is able to take oxygen-free radicals and convert this into hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. The enzyme that does this is called superoxide dismutase. 
and the superoxide dismutase is able to neutralize the free radical oxygen to generate peroxide. Now this is just an intermediate step because recall the peroxide can also form excuse me the hydroxide hydrogen peroxide can form peroxide free radicals. So the formation of hydrogen peroxide is protective against these free radical oxygens but it, they can also break down into peroxides. Again we have an unpaired electron which can once again attack saturated fatty acids in the plasma membrane causing cellular disruption. So what we need is a method to neutralize now the hydrogen peroxide. And we're going to do this by converting this into harmless water. Now in order to do this we have to be able to perform a redox reaction in order to grab these electrons and neutralize it. So we have an enzyme called glutathione oxidase. Now let's take a look at glutathione. Glutathione is a tripeptide. Recall a tripeptide is a three amino acid sequence and the sequence is glutamate, cysteine, glycine. Now the most important feature of glutathione is the free sulfhydryl on the cysteine amino acid. What this is going to be participating in is an oxidase reaction with glutathione oxidase. So we are going to be using two glutathione tripeptides. Notice that this is in the reduced state. We're going to oxidize the hydrogen peroxide to form water and in doing so we're going to transfer electrons from the free sulfhydryl of the cysteine residues and what we will generate is the oxidized form of glutathione. So we are combining in a disulfide bridge two glutathione tripeptides and in doing so we're transferring these electrons to peroxide ions to generate water. Now we have a limited amount of reduced form of glutathione and therefore if we continue this reaction which is being generating hydrogen peroxide all the time in red blood cells we will deplete the glutathione in this reduced form. So what we need to do is take the oxidized form and we need to reduce it back to the free sulfhydryl on the cysteine amino acid. The way we're going to do that is we're going to take another enzyme called glutathione reductase and perform another redox reaction. So we are going to reduce this disulfide bridge to the free sulfhydryls, so we have to transfer electrons to this. And those electrons are coming from NADPH. So this is a point of use for the NADPH that we have been generating in our previous video. So how does this tie back to glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase? There are specific mutations in certain individuals that will generate a lower amount of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase.
So the lower concentration of this enzyme means less NADPH formed. With a lower concentration of NADPH, the restoration of the reduced form of glutathione is going to be impaired. If that happens, the neutralization of the hydrogen peroxide is going to be inhibited. Therefore, the superoxide dismutase is doing its job in an attempt to neutralize the oxygen-free radicals, but the concentration of hydrogen peroxide begins to build in the red blood cell. Once this begins to build, we increase our concentration of peroxide ions. This, of course, leads to increased cell lysis because of membrane damage. If this specifically occurs on red blood cells, which are very sensitive, the individual will suffer from anemia. All because this is due to a glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. So the specific type of anemia, because there are many types of anemia, this is designated as a hemolytic anemia. Anemia meaning lack or reduced amount of red blood cells and oxygen carrying. Hemolytic, the lysis of red blood cells. So specifically, this anemia is due to the loss of red blood cells and thus loss of oxygen carrying capacity.